You ready? Yeah. What's going on? It's B King, Don and the King, B Timmons. Oh, uh, and I'm chilling with my man Burke. I'm on PowTV.net. You already know, 7:30. Yeah, what's good? It's your boy Young Birch, PowTV.net. I got the homie D King on the line. What's good, baby? What's good with you, brother? Chilling, man. I see you got the the video popping. It's been all over the the web for like the last two weeks. You want to talk about the single? Hello, Hold on, brother. Yeah. I lost you for a second. Say it again. I said you got the video all over the net for like the last two weeks. You want to talk about the single? Yeah, um, it's, it's really the buzz record. It's like it's 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 a shot. It's it's kind of like a a warning shot, but but kind of like a uh, it's 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 a record that I I made called B Timmons, where I just wanted something that kind of stated what I was gonna say. I'm coming out saying I'm the best rapper ever, which is kind of like the boldest statement I ever yeah. heard, and I wanted people to want it with me, so I wanted it to be like a uh, like a like a something that the DMV could get behind, being that it's like an underdog area, and it's something that the whole hip hop could be, get behind because kind of everything's kind of under construction, and people trying to figure out what direction it's going. I wanted something the, the XXL cover had just come out the month before, and I wanted something to separate me from people who my age. So I wanted it to be kind of like a shout out that like you know, you'd be surprised when you do your research who's been in this game, even though we all kind of like looking for this new generation leader. So it's kind of, the record kind of says what it is. And if you look at the video, it's the kids are with me. And people, a lot of people wonder, like, why the kids are with me. It's kind of like the young generation marching on the old. So it's kind of like out with the old, in with the new. You got to accept that with time, things change. And, you know, the future is now. People, Everybody wants to be the future. I'm now. So I can't plan for the future. All right, well, there's a lot of new rappers that come out, you know, once in a while that always, well, not always, but they state that they're, they're the best style or they're they're in the game and like why why should the audience believe that you're the best rap out? Well first of all, just like on some I was trying to let you got a track featuring, you know, Biggie and you assigned to Tupac, you probably don't have a better story than me. I've you know, I've, I've been through everything, you know, just to give you like a snapshot. My album album's called Behind the Music and people haven't heard of me yet. So I've been on everything from, you know, my first studio session before I met Jay was with KRS-One, MLP. Uh, a lot of the people who are listening and criticizing never even heard of these people, you know what I mean? The, uh, uh, second, you know, I've been in the studio, watched the blueprint get made. I've, I've done yoga with Russell Simmons, picked his brain, sat with some of the OGs in the game, like in the, in the game on the other side, you know, the between the lines. There's so many different things, whether you value – trap side or rap side with you value style or substance there's so much that i bring to this game called rap and it's not just rap it's it's it's, it's just something that every generation needs somebody who's going to speak for it and every emotion that a 25 year old can feel i'm i'm basically soaking up in a sponge and then you know drying out the sponge in front of you that's kind of like what my what this album is this behind the music project is so it, it's like it's style and substance. It's, it's, it's marketability. It's street credibility. It's lyrical ability. I've thought about it longer than you can unthink about it or how, longer than you can criticize it. You know what I'm saying? If you focus on anything for 10 years, you could do it. You feel me? And I just don't think you have, people have a better argument than me. You know? So like you just named a bunch of heavyweights. Like, What was it like working or meeting some of those people? I mean, you know, I was probably too young to understand the weight of it. Really, like, you know, it went from, um, like I said, when I was when I first started this music thing, it was like you know Drew Hill, Maya. They were the only people from my area, the DMV, Baltimore, DC, Maryland. You know that 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 had any sort of foothold in the industry. So there's no inspiration to look to look after. I got signed to Carter Faculty, which was Jay's um, business partner, Tata, and his cousin, Bi's label, on July 18, 2001. You know, I ran with Beanie Siegel's mother before then on, on a management company called Black Friday Management. That's how the whole introduction happened. And um, basically, you know, I didn't understand the weight of it because it went from Jay being one of my favorite rappers to meeting him and running with him and just being associated with the whole thing and watching the music get created and making music at the same time to just moving 100 miles per hour. Next year, I'm at the Mix Show Power Summit with Ray, Raekwon and, and Wah and 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 the clips and you know I'm 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 17 18 years old you know what I mean so it's like all this stuff is going on 
early, and I never had time to think about it. You know, it's only now that I'm working on an executive side and I own my own company where I can see kind of like the weight of it and how it's helping because some, you know, struggle, you can't make up struggle. You know, you can get shot and then tell your PR person, I got shot, and that'll give you two weeks of stories. Or you can you can fuck this, cat stacks, chick, or whatever, what have you, and then, and then that gives you two weeks of the story. But you can't make up struggle. This is eight mile meets. I'm about it because I was trapping in between the time. Too, so I'm living my shit. I went from rapping about it and almost joking and halfway living it to really living this shit. Rap did not make me want to do what I did. Rap made me do what I did. I learned the game, the ropes, it's the between the lines that keep you alive. And I'm an OG now, even though I'm only 25. So I just don't think white people have a better argument than me. Youth and experience is a dangerous thing. You know, and in politics it equals Obama and hip hop equals DK. I'm the one. All right, so. You you talked a little bit a little bit about your trapping past. Like, how do you go from that to doing something positive with the music? Say it again, I can hear you, brother. Like you was talking about your past just now, you know, with, with the streets or whatever. Like, how how did you go from there to to doing music? I always look at it like what I look at is the bird's eye view uh, of of the game. Like even the things I never directly. I talk about it more in my music than I talk about it in anything else, and that probably didn't help me, you know, because <laughs> this game is a lot closer to WWF than it is, like, autobiography. Yeah, but, you know, so I, I don't talk about it that much, you know what I'm saying? Like, my speed dial can get me indicted. So, I, like, what I'm trying to do now with it is kind of – I give people, like uh, – it's like a snapshot where people look at, look at 2D and they kind of walk through life. It's kind of like a bird's eye view. Not like I'm above you. But I'm seeing everything from, like, standing back. While I'm in it, I'm seeing it. And so it's kind of like you're in my passenger seat with me. So it's like I'm, the, I'm giving you so many of the drawbacks and the different different, different, different highs and lows that I've been through, and a lot more lows because I'm from Baltimore. We right now at the murder capital. It's not something to brag about. Ten years ago, I'd have bragged about that. Now I might cry about it. You feel me? And now it just give you this both sides. You know? What I'm walking in is pain. That's what separates me from the entire freshman class because you can't, you can't, Nobody can market pain. You feel me? I'm marketing pain. So I got a record with Trina right now, but it's called Just Like That, Putting Your Bottles Up. But this could be after a fucked up week at work or after a label said, fuck you, you're too nice. I want to keep snapping and whispering until hip-hop wants to come back, right? So, you know, it's like you're dancing. You know, sometimes you're dancing where you're paying. You lost somebody. A oh, man got killed in the creation of this project. You dance where you're paying. Or sometimes you're being introspective about your pain. But it's always pain music. I feel like that's the only thing that's missing from this game. People don't know how to market pain music. Pain music is usually boring or it's too preachy or it's too emo. It's not emo. It, does, it just feels. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just feel it. There's nothing you can do about it, you know? So I, I think people are just going to have to accept it. And if not, I'm going to promote till they accept it. I'm going to piss people off until they pick up the computer or pick up the mouse and pick up the CD, what have you. I'm just going to piss them off with so much promotion and so many bold statements that they want to prove me wrong, that it just happens. So. I'm saying it, it works for a lot of MCs. You know, they just keep dropping material, keep dropping material until, you know, mainstream accepts it. It's, it's yeah, and the right thing now. is, it's like what I'm doing is, you know, my, my material is edgy. It's coarse. You could call it hard. You could call it gangster because what I'm talking about, right? But at the same time, it's not it's it's not crazy cuts. It's Kanye on his album, and that's Kanye is one of my, he's literally one of my favorite artists ever. And I, like I said, I've got two records produced by him, whatever, in the past. But, you know, his album has more curses than mine. And people will call me a gangster artist. I talk about selling crack and doing this. But the thing is, I can say things in a different way. And so it's like my album's closer to Will Smith as far as uh, lyrically than Ice Cube, but it's more like Ice Cube in terms of the subject matter. Like, I can kill you without using a gun. I can kill you and, you know, I can, you know, fuck your bitch without saying bitch or fuck. And that's what I'm saying, the creativity of words, making simple words elastic. I'm not talking about using big words. In my interviews, I use bigger words than my, my, than my rap records, you know? I just find ways to make simple words elastic. So you give me and any rapper five words, I'm going to do more with them. So that's just better, you know? If any rapper did what I did, he just got better. So that's my whole point, that I didn't wait 10 years to be number two. So you can't even put me on the freshman list. I put a rapper on the freshman list because I own my company. And that sounds cocky, but I feel like it's earned, you know? So what made you go that route with, with owning your company instead of trying to, you know, just get on with the with the major and go that route? Um, I mean, I learned from the greats, you know. 
like, you know, a lot of people follow Jay's ad libs, Jay's music, or follow this person or that person. I follow his moves. I listen to him. Don't follow me. Listen, follow my moves. And what I did was, um, you know, what I learned, the, the great, one of the greatest things I learned from The Rock was that, you know, he was in-house. So everything was like, um, everything was in-house. You know, Kanye Bank, Brian Stanley, these people who were working, Young Guru, these are all in-house people. So they, yeah, the rest of the industry picked from them and made the industry. But there were people who were brand new, and they, used, they, they created a sound. Now everybody's trying to copy a sound. You know, the Rough Rider sound, the Casios, the keyboards, and Swiss, and then there was, and then there was a, um, there was a sound. There was a Murder Inc. sound with Irv and Seven, Aurelius, and then there was a Rockefeller sound. And what it, what it did was it made these artists bankable on a, on a you felt like you knew them level. That's why Kanye can still tour today. People still throw up that diamond. You know, it was it was big. And so what I'm saying is what I learned was um, um. You know, like creating your own music, creating your own lane. I had no choice, you know. I couldn't call R. Kelly from Baltimore to get on a hook, so I had to create my own hook. You know what I mean? Sometimes I got to be on it. When you put the niggas from down the block, the label, when you go to the labels, and I still got relations with these labels, they're going to be like, well, you're man from down the block. I can't put two new artists on. So it made me a person who make my own hooks. I'm not just saying this best rapper stuff because I rap. A lot of people are guest stars on their own songs. So you see songs that, like, go around – like, oh, the late nigga, nigga will tell you, oh, this artist had this song before I had it. You can't have somebody else's song for D. King because it's so customized. There's nothing you can do about it. You understand? So it's like, I'm, it forced me, like, out of necessity, it made me great. Out of the fact that no one's ever been from my area. I'm doing an interview. Out of, out of the fact that nobody's ever been from my area, it made me great. It pressured me to be great. Out of the fact that I was tired of people when I was young to say, and I sounded like this person, sounded like that person. Well, if I sing and this and bring melody into this, let, now they can't say shit because this person can't sing. You know, or this person doesn't take their shirt off. That's, and this person, you know, I, I basically consciously made myself the greatest. You know what I mean? But it's never forced on record. But I think about every aspect about what somebody's going to criticize. And so that's kind of like I, out of necessity what made, made these things happen. You know, who's going to really put me down with their click other than somebody on a J statue? I'm a threat to them. You can't stand next to that fire, you know, because I'm going to make a better record than you, bigger, and it's going to be more marketable. I'm not going to cuss. I'm going to get more sponsorships. I'm going to talk more shit, and people are going to believe it. I'm from Baltimore, and I'm from International. So it's too much of a threat. You'd rather put a nigga from your block who's not going to sell. You blame him and tax write off. I know the game. So I had to, I had to become an owner. There was no choice. I had no choice. You know, I had a little bit of bread and, you know, and, and then I just had a vision. It's about vision and execution. I felt like starting my own label is the only way to do it. Who's going to know how to put me out? You can't tell me, you know, my man who got killed during the creation of this project, that his story can't be told because it's not marketable. So I'm going to find a way to market. You know, you don't know my man. So you being at, my lab, at the label be like, well, your man's story, he can't make it on the disc. Now the disc isn't complete. So the only way you can be that boneheaded and stubborn is by paying for your own shit. And I'm not broke. So, there you go. Well, are there any barriers or um, or disadvantages to, to coming out of your area from Baltimore? Yeah, big time. There's a whole, there's a whole like, um, the divide of the DMV is big, you know? Like, the, um, like, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be have, to be having, like, people who I run with from every part, every pocket of the DMV, from D, uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Like just getting money and moving around and going to school, even seeing all different sides of everything, just got kind of exposed to different people in the DMV. Most Baltimore artists never even been to DC or Baltimore people. It's just like a divide that started in the 80s with the drug game and kind of fucked a lot of things up. But being that I spent so much time in DC too, it, 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 I kind of like feel like um, I kind of absorbed the pain from all over the area and understood the, the, the similarities more than differences. And so the hard thing about being from Baltimore is that there's no, you can't develop a hip hop scene because it's too street and street and hip hop aren't necessarily the same thing. That's what people will find out. Not they used to be, but it's kind of like there's a separation now. And so it's like when keeping it real goes wrong, that's Baltimore. You know, we 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 go too hard. You know, they watch the wire, we live the wire. You know, you're better off watching and writing about it than living it. If you live in it, it's kind of hard to go to the booth. You know, you can't have a a world star or a spliff TV type person who's creating a hip hop scene because people are going to take the cameras. You can't do this because the club will get shot up. And that's the element of just the poverty. 
it's not because the people are terrible. It's just because the things are ter- terrible, the elements. This is what it is. And so until that changes, the hip-hop scene can't change. Because we're still in the 80s type, the 90s type, Ish, where that's where that's who we are, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I get that you've seen it. It's sad, you know. No one's penned it, but here I am to just kind of give you the pain of it and how it can be flipped around on his head, and we looked at it as something positive. You know, I don't feel like anybody else can do it, and not necessarily discrediting nobody from Baltimore. But I feel like we have to show a different side of Baltimore so that people can appreciate all sides of Baltimore. We have to show how big somebody from Baltimore can be. You feel me? So I can motivate them. Because we haven't seen nobody from our area pop. So it's just like, it's so unbelievable. People in the DMV are so, they think it's so far-fetched from somebody from the area to pop. So I'm trying to pop all over. Because they know I'm here. Yeah, so you you had a lot of kids in your video, like you said. Do you, like, do anything to reach out to them or to, to help them or, like, anything to yeah. inspire them? Yeah, I actually got a program called uh, Teach Hip Hop that I'm starting with. Um, my business partner, Rudy Gay. He's uh, from the Grizzlies, whatever. We went to high school together. So okay, um, it's like after school music program is still in development and whatnot. And where I'm just gonna kind of weave in some of my people who I know from the industry, the executives, producers, rappers, songwriters, singers, and just kind of motivate the kids behind that. Because I feel I feel like alternate education, some of these music programs that they cutting, are like you know, kind of pushing people towards the streets. You can't blame the result, you know. You got to start from the source. And I feel like the source is the kid. And so, like, I wanted to touch on that. Like, you know, people in the rap game, people think these dudes is, is street or what have you. You know, like I said, um, myself included, you know, saying so, you know, people think that these dudes, that we as bad as it gets. But you look at the other countries, we're like, we still, we still a progressive country. You look at Panama and some of the things that go on in there and looking at the history and the canal and whatnot. And this is still 507. They're still struggling over there. They're still third world country. I wanted to touch on the, you know, it's kind of like had a city of God type thing. And I wanted to touch on, like, they, you know, like what they go through. You know what I mean? Kind of just show you their country and the different colors and and, and the, the carnival, show you, you know, the, the happiest times. And, and then to show you the, the hood. I went to the hood, the barrio. You know, they call that 507 where shit go down. Yeah. You know, and to show you the other side, the flip side of the corner. So it gets worse than even Baltimore. So that's really what I was trying to do. And with the, you know, with the kids, that's what they're representing. All right, so you've been around a lot of heavyweights in the game, you know, like I said before. So how do, how does D. King choose somebody to work with now? Because I know me, like, if, if, if I'm with The Rock, like, I'm not going to necessarily just work with anybody. Like, how do you choose to work with somebody? It's hard on my own projects because it's hard on any project. Like, if I if I do a project with somebody else, I'd be lying to them if I, if I can give them a full effort. If I don't even like the hook, like, it really starts from, like, the hook and, and, and the production on the record. So for other people, I have to really respect them either on a street level, on a personal level where they show me some love, or on a lyrical level. And I go, I go in that order because it's really hard for me to appreciate you on a lyrical level or on a musical level because it's like, you know, I perfected a crap that no longer exists. People don't care about him seeing until like two years ago. Everybody started talking about this rap cover back shit. So I really can't really collaborate with most people. I collaborated with Trainer because Trainer's dope as hell, and I respect anybody who's an OG and a vet in this game. And I'm from Baltimore where we grew up with everything from 3-6 to Wu-Tang. So we didn't really have a coast to claim to. We kind of rode whoever was killing at the time. And I, you know, I was born 85, so like a nigga like me, like West Coast when it was popping, a nigga like me, like South when it was popping, like in New York. So I kind of got a smorgasbord. It's kind of like being from Chicago or Detroit or some shit. You can't really tell where I'm from, where Kanye from. So to answer your question, you know, Trina, it made sense because I put her on a record that kind of felt like What's Your Fantasy to Me, the boy-girl response record, or, or like like an up-tempo record that just kind of like have fun. You know, it's, it, it, it got the party going. Or like a Shut Up record, her and Trick Daddy. I kind of felt like it was the energy of those old school South records before the South took over. But when I was listening to the South heavy, and then Snoop, me and Snoop did a record that I literally took him back into an era that he said, "quote You know, it felt like nothing but a G thing." You know what I'm saying? Like so, I mean, if he went from doing something where it was going to be a 12 bar like record, he might have did as a business favor to an 18 bar or something where he's excited, he's dancing around, the fatherhood cameras around. It was a real event. I took him back into an element that 
I think a lot of producers, even his label, might not allow him to go back into because it might not make sense for them. They think about the bottom line. I'm thinking about the way people's heads are going to be moving. You know, everybody from 15 to 40 just can loving to hear Snoop in this element. The way his voice hits the track is just right, you know? And so, like, I just try to make people – I try, you know, I'm a fan of music. That's why I get, you know, that, I'm a fan of music first, you know what I mean? So it's like, you have to understand that, like, when I listen to these records, I'm, I'm making a record for Trina. I'm making a record for Snoop. So it's like, it's in the vein of what I would want to hear them on. I'm just another instrument on the track, but I want to hear them. I'm a fan when I'm making it with them. So I become selfless about it because, I, like, I love these artists. I love these people. Pusha T, Sierra Marie, I like their work. And I wanted to use the, the stars that maybe ain't used all the time. You know, I don't want to use the typical stars because you're hearing them all the time. I wanted to show the best of the stars who I like. And I'm not saying I dislike the people who people use all the time. I just wanted to do something different because you expect that. You expect this feature, that feature. So I wanted to do something different. I think I brought the best out of them. So um, as far as other people, most people won't work with me, let's be honest. I'm nicer than all these dudes, and I'm the only one who will say that because everybody else needs all these other dudes. I'm paid. I'm just trying to do this for respect. I got all the liaisons I need. I know Jay. I, I, I need. I need. Need to know him. Whatever executive level, Russell. These people. You know, <laughs> there's so many people I know on the executive level who are over the rappers who people look up to. They look down on the people who people look up to. I really don't care about these dudes because if they fucked with me, they didn't fuck with me then when I was broke and when I didn't have shit or when I was 40 large in the street and I couldn't spend shit because boys is watching. Like, <laughs> then they don't need to fuck with me now. You know what I mean? We're not friends. I'm here to make ends. So that, my purpose is completely different. I can be the anti-hero. I have no problem being the dark knight. I just want to be the, the most respected. I want to have, you know, the top spot. And I know that comes with envy. And I know the truth is always met with resistance. I don't expect people to just give me that. So I'm just take it. Wow. So, it's just an aggressive sports mentality. And uh, people are going to take it the wrong way, but they're going to listen either way. And once they have listened, they have a 50-50 choice. It's either yes or no. And trust me, they're going to lean towards that yes. So where can everybody find your music? YouTube.com, DKingTV. You know, it's it's a viral world. and everybody wants to see videos. Be Timid is the video. Um, the website is DKing730.com. That has um, some of the videos as well. You can, it got the link to the iTunes and everything. Be Timid and Just Like That featuring Trina is available right now on iTunes. And the Twitter is twitter.com slash dking730. 730 is a crazy word. you got to be crazy to adjust to it. So 730 is not just a movement. It's a way of life. So, once again, it's dking730.com, twitter.com slash dking730, and youtube.com slash dkingtv. Please remember, Don and the King. Trap side, rap side. <laughs> That's what's up, powtv.net. Dking. You know, thanks a lot. You know saying? We, we definitely learned a lot about you. And, you know what I'm saying, we're going to definitely put up those singles on the site. And you know, thanks a lot for the interview, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Look out for that beat, Timmy. And uh, just like that, coming soon.